We offer programs at all levels, bachelor's, master's, as well as doctoral programs. The emphasis will be more on the bachelor's degree now. So if you notice, we have seven programs on offer, uh, biotechnology, chemical engineering, civil engineering, computer science, electronics and communication, electrical and electronics, and mechanical engineering. So what we will be doing right now is inviting my colleagues uh, who are faculty and heads of different departments who would give you a complete detail or a complete overview of the programs they offer under their departments. So we are going alphabetically, but in the reverse order. So we will start with, go back Shivani, we'll start with mechanical first, and then we will move on to electrical, computers, civil, chemical, and biotechnology. Each of these presentations would be around 10 minutes. Uh, you will be given the uh, complete overview, the scope, the program content. Uh, you can make note of it if you would like to. And then we will take up questions towards the end of these uh, six presentations. So be ready. And I would like to now invite Dr. Snehanshu Chaudhary from the Department of Mechanical Engineering uh, to take on um, further with an overview of mechanical engineering. Thank you very much. I will be coming back towards the end again to talk to you about the admission process and the fee structure and scholarships mainly. So please stay on and listen to the listen to my colleagues. Thank you. Well, um, thank you, Nahid, for the excellent introduction. Uh, my name is Nihanshi Choudhury, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, and uh, on behalf of mechanical engineering, I welcome you all to this webinar, uh, which would help you in deciding which stream you want to pursue further. Next slide, please. So we offer all three degrees that Nahid has talked about. We offer a bachelor's degree, master's degree, and the PhD degree in mechanical engineering. However, this webinar, we are going to talk exclusively about the mechanical uh, undergraduate degree, that is the BE degree. Uh, this is offered full time, and the prerequisites for admission are physics, chemistry, and math. Uh, if you have more questions regarding this, the admission department would be uh, glad to help you with that. Um, and if there are any inquiries, or if there is somebody who's interested in the ME or the PhD program, uh, please uh, put forth your questions and we will answer that. Okay. What I also want to uh, highlight is that we have, or we we are going to add a minor in aeronautical engineering. We have received uh, a lot of requests or inquiries whether we offer anything of that nature. Uh, so a course structure has been proposed and it has been approved by various cross-campus meetings. Uh, it's now uh, waiting for the approval from the Senate. So by the time uh, these students, the, the new set of students join and get to choose their minor, we hope that this would be in place. So what I am showing here is uh, various specialization that is possible under the head mechanical engineering. So you see machine design, manufacturing, robotics. So these are all areas uh, which mechanical engineering caters to. So machine design is, is one of the core uh, specialization areas. Manufacturing, on the other hand, is more towards the industrial application. And then there are other uh, specialization areas like robotics, so which is pretty new. And then uh, these are also uh, at the cutting edge of usage between the industry as well as uh, academic research. What you see under these three different heads are the various courses that students can take. So if some student wants to specialize in machine design, he or she can take up these courses. Uh, I would like to point out that the courses mentioned here, they include some of the compulsory courses or the core courses that we say, and then uh, uh, elective courses also. Next slide, please. So continuing with that, uh, what I'm showing here are three other major uh, specialization areas. Thermal science, uh, particularly uh, looking at the thermal aspect of science, 
uh, aspect of mechanical engineering and fluid sciences where we deal with the fluid flow and aeronautical like i said we we do offer certain courses for example rocket propulsion this is already offered uh, as an elective in our department right now but once we get the uh, minor course structure approved by the senate this will this will be there will be many more courses uh, in this particular field next please so not only we have core courses and elective courses that a student can choose uh, giving him the flexibility to pursue what he wants to pursue we also have uh, well equipped labs that that train the students on the hands on aspects so we have uh, engineering graphics and cad lab composite manufacturing 3d printing workshop so on and so forth these these are uh, some of the labs that we that we have right now ongoing so the picture, the leftmost picture that you see is from your robotics lab. So this shows a robotic arm that can pick up any spherical objects. The next picture that you see is a CNC milling machine. CNC is being widely used by the industry nowadays. So this is a full scale 3D uh, milling machine that we have in our department. And students uh, get to use these uh, machines during their workshop and production techniques and they can learn how these programmings are done uh, towards the right bottom <coughs> excuse me towards the right bottom you see a wind tunnel this is part of our fluid mechanics lab so we do have good labs that support the theory uh, that we teach here to augment also this learning process we have several softwares so AutoCAD and CATIA are uh, plotting and assembly softwares. DFX is a product design software. ANSYS and Abacus, these are uh, structural fluid softwares, fluid simulation software. Abacus is exclusively structural. Uh, ADAMS is a kinematics and dynamics software. Espirit is a computer-aided manufacturing software. Digimat uh, assists with uh, material design aspects. Ricardo is an engine software, internal combustion engines. Uh, MATLAB is a mathematical software that we are trying to incorporate fully into all of our uh, courses so that students get to know some sort of mathematical software. And then we also have automated Automation Studio, which caters to hydraulic systems and uh, pneumatic design. So we do have good facilities here. So students um, armed with this knowledge, students have competed in various uh, competitions and they have brought laurels to us for our department. The Expo Life 2020 University Innovation Program, uh, two of our teams uh, was awarded a prize money of 25,000 dirhams and they are from mechanical engineering in 2019 one team was offered a 50000 dirham prize money and this is through the university innovation program for the expo life 2020 so this is more on the innovation aspect uh, of our students um, not only they have innovation aspects but they also have their entrepreneurial side so team auto chain has earned a first prize and also a second prize of $4,000 and $5,000 that you see here uh, as part of the Seaside Startup Summit in Ras Al Khaimah. We had another team, Trepid, uh, under an Interlac Aviation Scheme that received a seed fund of uh, 50,000 dirhams. And there is another uh, startup called Navifly. And this is a unique uh, BPDC startup uh, from one of our mechanical engineering students. And Navifly has been ranked as one of the top 20 teams in the world. Uh, and they have successfully done a business pitch at the Propeller Shannon in Ireland. So what I am trying to tell you is that our students have performed exceptionally well, both on the academic uh, innovation as well as on the entrepreneurial side. So our students graduating 
uh, are well placed in several companies. Uh, what, you, what I'm showing here is a list of companies that have hired our students, uh, namely Petrofac, Matt, Mott McDonald, Unilever, l and Baker Hughes, so lots of these. The list is not complete for the shortage of space. And these students have been uh, assigned various jobs, so they have been performing different roles, particularly HVAC industry, petroleum industry, construction industry, uh, as well as technical sales estimation. So our graduating students equipped with what we have taught them are successfully capable of performing at the highest level over a broad spectrum uh, of areas. What I'm going to show you now are some of the career paths that have been charted by students. So Pooja, she graduated in 2014 and then pursued a higher degree in academics before moving on to industry. Next slide, please. Akshan, on the other hand, he graduated in 2016 and has stayed completely with the industry, right? Uh, climbing up the ladder. Next slide, please. Parsh, uh, he graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering in 2011. However, he decided to pursue uh, an academic career uh, or moved on to a higher degree uh, in academics, but on the managerial side of things. But then uh, he moved on to the industry. We also have some other students who, after their uh, mechanical engineering degree from Bitspilani Dubai campus, have worked as interns and uh, then were uh, absorbed by the various industries where they did their internship. Uh, this is what Ms. Nahid talked about, our industry uh, academia collaboration through our PS, practice school programs. And then Dhruval Patel, um, once graduated, he followed a long list of internship with various companies and then was absorbed by his final internship company, Daikin, but chose to move on to uh, higher studies after that. Finally, Yash, who graduated uh, recently in 2018, he did internships in a couple of companies and was uh, also accepted by, the, by, the, by Schindler. So what I am trying to tell you is that we do offer excellent opportunities through our flexible curriculum. A student choosing mechanical engineering can uh, pick up the courses. Apart from the core courses, he can pick up uh, or choose certain electives that will allow him to pursue uh, further avenues that he wants to pursue in either industry or academia. And all of our alumni are successfully placed uh, here in UAE or abroad. So that would be a short uh, overview of our department. I would be glad to answer any questions you might have. Um, so now I would pass on the baton uh, to give the overview about electrical and electronics engineering over to Dr. Sunil Thomas from the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Nehanshu. Um, well, uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Sunil Thomas. I am currently working here as an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering here at Vicks Pilani Dubai campus. So I will be quickly uh, giving you an overview about our department and uh, its basic uh, functions and core objectives. Well, uh, to start with, uh, I will just uh, quickly tell you the programs that are offered under the umbrella of electrical and electronics engineering. We uh, have two first degree programs, meaning which we would be uh, having offering courses on BE electrical and electronics engineering as well as we have another program offered by the Department of Electrical Engineering, which is Electronics and Communication Engineering. We also do have two specialization in the higher degree stream, which is Master of Engineering in Microelectronics Specialization. And we do have another branch, which is uh, Pure Electrical Engineering, where we will be offering Master in Engineering, uh, Electrical Engineering emphasis given to power electronics and drives. So we have totally four programs offered from our Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. 
Yeah, to give an overview about uh, the department curriculum, uh, we should uh, emphasis should be given to the modern curriculum, which should be benchmarked to the industry standards. For example, each and every semester we make a study about what is happening latest to the industry. We do make changes to the electives that is offered to the students at the third year and final year level to equip with them with the latest technologies that has been, you know, practiced in the industry. In addition to that, we should not, you know, forget the fact that we should be very uh, strong in the fundamental engineering aspects of electrical and electronics, which include uh, the subjects which are given there. It starts with the basic analog digital circuit design principles, which will be normally covered for the students to emphasis on how a circuit works, how do you design a circuit, how you should work with the circuit to get your desired output. That has been covered in the subject area, which includes an analog and digital electronic circuit design. So moving forward, we have uh, specialized subjects in control systems, which helps the students to understand the basic control theory. How do you, how do you manage control system aspects in a big industrial unit? Moving forward, we have got fundamental subjects like electrical machines, which we cannot ignore in any uh, stream of engineering. So it's basic operations, their basic fundamentals, and how do they really help us in uh, you know, forming a design parameters, all will be discussed in the subject area, which covers electrical machines part. And we do have micro computer application subjects, which is nothing but the VLSI, that is a very low, large scale integration method. And we do emphasis on the electronic device development and microelectronic specialization. And uh, to be specific on to the communication part of the engineering, we do have specialized subjects which deal with the design, modulation, and implementation of how to develop modern satellite technologies and mobile technologies. This is the gist of the core subjects that we will be offering in the uh, three years of program, um, in addition to the electives which I have told, which means the industry standards. To give an augmentation to whatever they learn in the theory, we do have well-equipped lab which are specific to subjects and branch of study. As we all know, we agree to the fact that electrical machines operations has to be dealt practically. So we have a full-fledged lab which contains all the alternating current and direct current machines. We do have design labs based on the electrical machines operation. An advanced lab of this is nothing but the power electronics labs, which include drives. So how do we control the speed of the machines? How do you practically stop, start? All those things will be dealt on a practical basis. We have uh, analog and digital electronics lab, which would be uh, helping you to understand the basic design concepts in the digital uh, design of any circuits. Now, moving forward, uh, we do have uh, emphasis given to the communication engineering, which is we have a separate lab on it. We have signal processing and simulation lab, which will be common to the electronics and electrical students. Microprocessor is another common lab, which uh, the stream of students will be utilizing. And obviously, the instrumentation part of engineering is also dealt in instrumentation lab, which we have a separate lab here. Next slide, please. So now we should not be forgetting about the students' achievements that we have been getting or we have been maintaining all through years uh, since the inception of this college. We do have students from our department taking care in all the major technical events conducted throughout the GCC, especially in UAE and GCC. So we do have uh, the uh, university, uh, you know, the research competitions normally held at Abu Dhabi. We normally bag awards and some of them uh, have been highlighted here. Not to forget in the second point, which is a very prestigious award called the James Dawson Award, which is won by uh, our current third year student, Mr. Sarth at Seti, um, last year for his uh, contribution in developing a project called Vision Cap. That uh, the gist of the project is nothing but any visually impaired uh, you know, person can uh, reach its destination using the GPS codes and audio systems. It was a wonderful project uh, done by him, and it was really, really appreciated by the James Dawson Committee, and uh, he was being awarded this, and it has come in the whole newspapers here. And a couple of other uh, uh, achievements by the students are also marked here. We go for all major competitions. Not to forget is that the Solar Decathlon team that we have, we do have this in collaboration with uh, another international university, we, uh, our students have actively participated in that competition. It's an international competition where we need to develop uh, green uh, buildings, which has zero emissions of uh, pollution. So they stood forth in that in the entire competition done worldwide. 
not to uh, forget about the Expo Live, as we all know that Dubai is really gearing up for the Expo 2020, which uh, might have a slight delay for uh, one year here. But we, our students are back to two projects, which has been already completed for 80, 25,000 each, uh, like the mechanical department. And we have another project, which is still going on, which would be completed uh, in a couple of months from now. The, these uh, are the places, uh, this is a very small list only. We have students getting placed in well-reputed organizations in different roles and responsibilities, starting from a trainee engineer. We have students who are project head in Petrofact, uh, who has already graduated three to four years before. So these are some of the companies which I would like to emphasize, and these names are very popular in the industry. Not to mention, uh, we have, uh, the list is endless, to be honest. Please, next slide. Yeah, uh, like I mentioned, uh, not only our students are interested in pursuing a career at the industrial level, they also do have a lot of motivation in pursuing higher degrees. So we see a lot of balance between these two in our graduating students. Some of them who are really interested in the research aspects of it, they really orient themselves from the third year onwards. They were more into the thesis side of it, research side of it. So we do give them a lot of, uh, you know, training on a lot of advice on how to go ahead with filling up applications. And they have to be uh, precisely talking here. They have landed up in top-notch universities in the world. Um, some of them I've mentioned here, out of which uh, two students have graduated from uh, Stanford University. They are doing great, and they are now uh, currently in the U.S. running their own um, business. So yeah, this slide talks about the professional bodies that we have. Uh, there are two types of professional bodies we run here. One is an international uh, body, other one is the uh, local body. So the international body will give, which is nothing but the IEEE. Uh, Ms. Nahid Afshan in her presentation has told about this. This is the largest of its kind in the GCC and Northern Africa. Now we have a lot of students. Whoever students are joining under this stream will have to register for this. This gives them an tremendous opportunities to learn what is the latest happenings in the industry. They get to know the latest journals, they get access to them. They need to uh, get used with a lot of uh, trending discussions on technologies. And we do have a specific wing of IEEE for women here. We call it as uh, IEEE WIE. So uh, faculty mentors will be there for it. And uh, all uh, ladies who are registered for this particular course will also be encouraged to take part in a lot of events. And not only to mention the last one, which is the Electronics Institution of Engineers in India. It's an Indian chapter. We do have a, a branch chapter here, which is headed by our uh, head of the department. And these professional bodies, in addition to their academia, gives a different realm of thought process in making them professionals. We have a local body, which is known as Association of Electronics Engineers, AOW, we call it here. This is a locally run, uh, organized uh, body, which is uh, headed fully by the students. And they take care of uh, guest lectures, arranging guest, guest lectures, bringing up uh, workshops, seminars. They do field trips, which will help the students know what is happening in the process industries. They even contact the alumni and they do interactions with us. They motivate them. And we have competitions running at the uh, university level to motivate the, the students. So this gives a, a brief overview about the the electrical and electronics engineering. So if you could just uh, bring it in one uh, simple sentence is that, you know, we have students who are really motivated and gets really charged up and getting their things accomplished. We have graduated a lot of students who are now doing excellently well in industry as well as in the academics. And uh, with this, I would like to um, uh, move forward and give the presentation to Dr. Suchala Dishwati, who is the head of the Department of Computer Science. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil, for your uh, introduction. So I would like to present our department. That would be the Department of uh, Computer Science. Can we go on to the next slide? Yeah, so the different programs that we offer in our department are uh, for the undergraduate level, we offer the BE in Computer Science. And then we also have the ME Software Systems for the higher degree students, as well as the PhD program. So coming to the content of the program, our uh, program is structured in such a way that uh, electives are constantly changed. We do offer a wide range of electives that you know students are currently going to be interested in. So courses like artificial intelligence, machine learning, networks and security, these are things that are you know uh, something that is constantly evolving. 
So we do keep restructuring our curriculum to suit the current requirements of the market. In addition to this, all the foundation courses that are very, very essential for a computer engineer to know, like programming courses, like maybe C programming, object-oriented programming, where they learn Java. And in addition, say even the theoretical computer science courses, like you know, compiler construction, uh, we have a theory of computation, operating systems, uh, networks. So these are all going to be the fundamental courses that are expected for any computer science engineer to know. So uh, the entire bouquet of courses or the array of courses that we offer is something that is very interesting and uh, a, a student has the option of choosing so once he is in the second year he chooses lots of different electives so depending upon his plan for what he wants to do or what he is interested in he could be choosing those electives so that when he passes out he is more geared towards that particular line of study yeah next slide so coming to an engineering program as all of you all would be very aware it would be very, very essential that students have a proper hands-on experience to whatever they are learning. So in that manner, we do equip the students to be very strong technically when they pass out. So they do have, like I discussed with you all, programming courses where we teach them a few courses. They do work on projects where they kind of you know, self-learn and with the help of a faculty, they work in a particular area. But in addition to this, we do have quite a few software. So like if you're seeing, we have a GPU that is your uh, NVIDIA Tesla P100. This is one of the top-notch top uh, GPUs that are used for machine learning applications. So this is uh, something that we have. Students can work on campus. They can even remotely connect to the server because whenever we're talking of doing any big machine learning applications, generally it needs a lot of processing. So these processes could run continuously for two to three days. So in such cases, we do have, you know, students can even remotely connect to the, serv to the server and they could work from anywhere, maybe in the hostel or maybe somewhere outside the campus also. Nowadays, as you all know, IoT is something that is really caught up. So there are lots of different applications where we see IoT making uh, in way. So we see that you know, we do have Raspberry Pi. Many of our students are currently interested in working on projects to do with IoT. So they work with IoT, they could work with AI, with IoT and different such applications. We do have this Adobe Creative Cloud where students interested in design could work on. We have a tie up with Microsoft. So there are lots of Microsoft softwares that are freely available to us. So all your visual, soft, visual uh, .NET software, all these kind of software are accessible for students to use. As we discussed, networks is something, again, that is very important, especially like today's day and time. All of you all know, because of this COVID situation, we have so many people who are working from home. Okay, so all this has been possible only because we have the networks in place which could support all this. So we have networks which is studied in detail by students. They also work in the lab. They use a NetSim software for simulation of networks. We also have a high performance computing server where we say that you know our applications like our database applications and many of our programs and all that are available centrally in the server. So it kind of you know, makes, uh, makes it easy for us to actually maintain our data. Like during the exams, students cannot be accessing their regular programs. So we have a lot of access control that can be done because of this server. We also have this enterprise architect for students who are working in so, say software design, software development. Okay, and as we discussed, you have this uh, theory of computation and more theoretical uh, computer, co computational courses, which are also important. So in such courses, this mathematical software is also used. So coming to our clubs, because as you all know, an engineering degree has to be complete. It has to give a student an overall sense of you know, development. He could progress not only in his theoretical concepts, but also in many different ways. So we do have very uh, strong two clubs. Okay, and these clubs also give a platform for students to actually exercise their kind of you know, organizational ability where they can actually form groups, they can be leaders, they can share their knowledge by conducting workshops. So one of these clubs that we have is ACM. And as Nahid told you, we were ACM is a worldwide very, very well organized or very, very well recognized organization. It is both for the educational sector as well as a professional association. 
It is based in New York, and there are more than 100,000 people who are members of ACM. So as uh, Nahid just shared with you all, we were selected as one of the best student chapters because of the large number of activities that we have been performing. I will just share some of them with you all. So when we look at ACM, we have different sec uh, different uh, versions to the ACM. We've also started off with ACMW, which was the first women's only chapter in the, in the UAE. Okay, so we've conducted plenty of different uh, events when we're talking about the ACM. We have lots of these boot camp events. We do have lots of coding events. Like with, with Google, we conducted this hash code, which is something that is very challenging for students. We had build your own PC where students disassembled a computer and assembled it again. Yeah, next slide. So these are some of the activities. You can see there is very, very good participation and involvement of students. We do have a complete student uh, association we do have presidents and you know the entire thing which is selected by the students so it becomes a very very uh, interactive sessions that we do have in these uh, events another club that we have is going to be the microsoft tech club so again microsoft tech club we have access to all these microsoft uh, software we do have what is called microsoft student partners okay where the uh, microsoft conducts lots of events where they gather students from different campuses. So it becomes a good atmosphere for students to actually exchange ideas. Microsoft sponsors lots of events. It does send students to different countries. So this has become an excellent platform to actually students for a good wider exposure and also to interconnect with students across different campuses. So these are some of the events that we have had. Now, coming to the scope, once you are a computer science engineer, so you all know there is uh, basically no specific area that computer science is not really required in. It could be in any specific field. It could be in mechanical engineering because lots of tools you see are all going to be automated. It could be in civil engineering. It could be in design. It could be in architecture, game development, AI, robotics. Okay, So any specific field, game development, network security. So these are going to be many, many different areas where computer science would always be used. Coming to the achievements, like we've discussed, this was a big achievement for us, which we were informed about only last month, where we were we were announced as an outstanding club, and we were even given $500 as recognition for our effort. Okay. In addition to this, the other achievements that we have is we've had students who have regularly been participating in uh, global programming competitions. So we've had students. I think Shivali, you can go a little slow. Your ahead okay so what we've had is we've had students who've actually participated in these uh, programming competitions and uh, for two years in uh, in a row they've actually won this gulf programming competition where we had students from different uh, gulf countries who've all been representing here so you have to be a very very good programmer to actually win this competition so these are some of the very notable achievements that we have had the next slide in addition to this, there are lots of different events that our students very commonly, very frequently participate in and they have been winning. So as you can see, there are lots of many hackathons that they have won. One of the very uh, you know, big prize money uh, hackathon that they have won was something to do with the blockchain challenge that was conducted by Harriet Watt and Dubai Silicon Oasis. So the students, the first prize winners won a prize of 55,000 AD. And the second prize members also won a prize of 15,000 AD. Coming to where our students go for, for higher education, uh, every year we do have lots of students who are very interested in computer science. We generally have students with very high percentage. So, you know, very uh, students with a lot of motivation would generally be joining us. They do go for to very high, very good universities. Every year we have at least one or two students who goes to like you know, the top university like Carnegie Mellon. Even this year we have a student who's got admission there to their AI program, which is very, very difficult to get into. We have also having a student who will be joining Columbia for their data science program. So these are all very highly sought after programs. So our students have very frequently been joining such good institutions world over. 
in terms of placements there are lots of our students uh, even now we have students who have been recruited by microsoft our student who was working who was studying in colombia she did her masters in colombia she is now working in apple so likewise we have students who are working in many different kind, different organizations many of them working in emirates and many other such good organizations and it is very heartening to know that many times we get very very positive feedback from uh, people who are working in these organizations we get to hear that our students are doing very well so that is very heartening for us to know we also have a few companies which have been uh, some students who have started off with their own startup maybe right from the year that, from year 2 so in their second year itself they founded these companies one of them is this audius company so this was they work in blockchain technology and uh, only last year they were selected as one of the most innovative companies in the uae by the ministry of economy in addition we also have raxo raxo is now going to be a company which deals with uh, vehicles fleet owners okay so they kind of monitor different vehicles and see how they could kind of minimize wastage in different ways so these would be the overall accomplishments that we have of our department any other queries that you all have towards the end of the session we would be more than happy to address your queries yeah thank you thank you ma'am uh, hello everybody good day i'm dr vivek from department of civil engineering um, so in our department next slide please so in our department majorly we are providing two programs he in civil engineering and uh, doctor program and uh, the, regarding the doctor program uh, if you have any queries just put a uh, put in the last and i'll be really happy to actually answer that okay Uh, so in the civil engineering um, uh, undergraduate program is a full time program and require the background of physics chemistry and mathematics which all the department uh, faculties have hold and coming on going on this next one okay uh, so regarding the pro, uh, regarding the civil engineering department actually yeah our civil engineering is uh, a long and uh, it, it has a long and impressive history and it never fades and uh, in uh, the civil engineers are given the responsibility to design maintain and analyze and maintain many of the structures infrastructures in and around us including all the things like buildings structures like uh, roads bridges dams metros uh, let, let's say for example even the sewage uh, the sewage is all or water which has to have to be treated on the surface so everything has to be actually have to have a civil engineer's hand okay and it never fails and it's very typical actually for the civil engineers to actually specialize uh, in specialize and sub specialize and i i think here actually the major disciplines are the core disciplines actually it includes the structural engineering transportation water resources construction management environmental engineering geotechnical engineering like say for example the structural engineering okay structural engineers what the structural engineers do actually they do analyze design and uh, all the structures in and around us okay all the forces so if a structural engineer does not everything is done so you have to be have a confident and you have to be very confident in all design so the structural engineer takes care of that okay as for transportation all the sub, all the all the transportation facilities which are seen in and around us like roads how the metros the, the waterways all kind of things has to be done with the transport engineers is what who that is the, those people who are doing that okay construction engineers they manage last construction projects water resource engineers what they do is uh, they advise on the sustainable resources or conserving water and building dams conveying the water as uses etc okay and as for engineering environment and engineers they use the principles of engineering actually to solve many many and sort out the problems environmental problems particularly the uh, water pollution uh, air pollutions or the recycling problems the waste disposal public health regarding all the things which they that, that people actually will do and our course our uh, program actually takes care of all that act under the all the three major disciplines okay moving forward moving forward please Okay, so I told initially that we have a pro. It's very typical for the people to actually branch and sub branch. Okay, based on your interest, after say taking up the sub branches, actually we can further the branch out to sub disciplines. Okay. Particularly the tunnel engineering, coastal engineering, metro metro engineering, urban urban planning, geoinformatics, earthquake engineering. As you know, every, the disaster in is all around us, and we have to have a constant study on that. So earthquake engineering takes care of that, and material science. Uh, it's 
the regarding the building materials you have to actually consider and regarding the constraint all these axles are concerned are very there are the very few uh, sub disciplines which we have to take care of. okay and moving forward yes okay in i am moving on to the curriculum overview so uh, our curriculum covers all the aspects of basic aspects of civil engineering or civil engineering okay uh, our courses take care of all the or it's cover it's an over well around well round uh, curriculum where it covers all the aspects of civil, civil engineering through the core areas and and you can have a wide range of electives there are at least a wide range of electives which actually caters to that okay which which is uh, which case which gives you much more uh, it gives much more interest to the sub disciplines okay and uh, of course the, all the other things are the same uh, practice tools and practice students projects everything remains the same okay next next slide please next okay so in for regarding the laboratories and uh, softwares we have uh, for we have actually a very well equipped fully functional laboratory for undergraduate programs okay it's a uh, fully functional fully it's very and for undergraduate programs it's best Okay, it includes the concrete laboratory, soil mechanics laboratory, surveying lab, transportation engineering laboratory, computer aided design laboratory, environmental laboratory, uh, and fluid mechanics lab. And these are few of the photos of our lab. And uh, in, okay, next slide. And as uh, as the technology grew, all the complex calculations and analysis and designs and are aided through software. Okay, and our actually our curriculum, our academic activities are well well collated with this this uh, this new softwares. Okay, and it's all courses are actually code in course specific. There are softwares attached to them, and some of the softwares are AutoCAD, like say for example drafting, the Statro for structure analysis, PTPDSM for transportation purposes, Plaxis 2D for uh, uh, geotechnical analysis. Okay, MATLAB uh, for mathematical modeling, uh, ArcGIS for geoinformatics. Okay, abacus and sciences are uh, finite element modeling of uh, structures and uh, fluids. So all the softwares are all attached along with our courses. So when a, the students, uh, when they are doing the core courses or electives, this uh, uh, this softwares are attached along with it. So this is a hot. This is very much required required for the industry as well because uh, they they industries they seek the knowledge and they are prior equipped with it when they are doing the courses itself. Okay, so next slide please. So, in regarding the civil engineering jobs, actually there are many, many jobs profiles available for civil engineers across the country. And uh, some of the few, very few, are design engineers, structural engineers, environmental consultants, geotechnical engineers, town planners, quantity surveyors, offshore structure engineers, building survey contact control surveyors, road safety engineers, transport engineers, and like this. And these are very few jobs uh, profiles, job profiles which is in civil engineers can get. Okay, if uh, if they are doing well enough for in a civil engineering department. Okay. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and uh, in from entry level, so for as for a civil engineer, from an entry level to the project leads, actually it uh, it it requires a continuous team effort. Okay, it requires a continuous team effort, and it uh, it's always problem solving, and it requires a heavy hand. Uh, uh, actually, uh, it, and the, it based on the experience actually the job profiles can be increased in uh, it can be in construction let's say for example the building the building the design uh, or executing the designs comes under the construction phase okay when when they enter as an entry level and they can progress to an executive uh, manage in management okay throughout the years it progress from 5 to 10 to 30 years so slow in continuous progression of, of job is very simple. as for the consultancy uh, it actually what they do is they give management or planning solutions or design solutions for the store for the, for the things okay so it, and an entity level manager can reach to a ceo level and throughout the years okay so uh, through that through the there is a good career growth which can happen in a civil engineering field okay next one Government and of course in government policies and everything, the civil engineers are a must. And uh, it regards to the public health and safety as well. So uh, environmental experts. So everything actually, uh, the government is much care taking care of, of our uh, civil engineers also. Okay. So they have a because it has a positive effect in the public infrastructure. So it starts from entry entry level itself when the project manager then goes to a government uh, actually government uh, uh, 
uh, related activities or agency directorates of the areas. As for industry, uh, it uh, it's also have a wide uh, career prospects because uh, for, for it to trust it uh, relates to cost effective operations process and process. And again, the one which I have not in, uh, included here is the research. Okay, in research and development of more the things actually have can also be incorporated in civil engineering. Okay, okay, next one, please. Okay, so that will be it, and I'll hand over to Nishan Pandey, sir. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Vivek. My name is Nishan Pandey. I'm head of uh, chemical engineering department. So you might have a lot of questions regarding what is chemical engineering? What do you study when you join be in chemical engineering? And what the chemical engineers do? So we offer bachelor's conventional program, four-year program in bachelor's. And we also offer PhD for full time and part time. Our department also offer a minor program in minor certification program in material science and engineering. It is an additional certification which you can obtain by taking additional courses in this area. So I define chemical engineering is all about how to produce a chemical product from raw material in the most efficient and economical way, which is environmental friendly and a safe for the society. So we apply basic concepts of chemistry, means how the reaction takes place between raw materials. What are the physic physical laws applied? For example, a fluid which is flowing through a pipe, combined with the mathematical principles and model all these calculations and carry out the calculation using mathematical techniques and convert into some technology which will give you the product. So after studying the first year fundamental courses which are common to all engineering branches of chemistry, physics and mathematics, in second year onwards you will study all chemical engineering courses will give you the basic concepts on thermodynamics, process calculation, heat transfer, how to design a reactor, how to carry a separation of various chemicals, and how to control all these processes. This all course will be combined with various software tools, such as MF Excel for calculation, s -Pen for the process simulation of an entire plant for one particular operation. We also add Python language for the calculation in the calculation of various courses, MATLAB, and JSON of case. Apart from this, you also take various elective courses in humanities and open electives. We also offer department courses to satisfy your area of interest, such as environmental pollution control, process safety, biochemical engineering, or to be specific, for example, molecular simulation. Next, click this. This all this is are finally in the final year. We will be doing the practice tool, which is the industrial experience. And instead of this four courses, you can also select some of the project-based courses in which you apply the knowledge learned in these courses. And on your own and with the support, you can carry out a project which is either study project. For a design or a lecture based project. Next, please. So, what will you experiment in the laboratory? So, as a part of curriculum, chemical engineers will do at least 40 experiments in the lab. Apart from this, there are several equipment and instruments are available for the students to experiment whatever they have studied in the classroom to test and verify concepts which they have understood clearly from the classroom. And there are several equipment which are available which resemble, resemble similar to which you will see in the industry. For example, a distillation column or a vacuum distillation. Next, please. So what do students do apart from this regular study? So when we invite uh, industry people for the interaction. Previous one, please. Previous slide, previous one. 
So we invite industry people for the interaction to understand that what do industry expect from the students. They can also understand what are the different advances, what are the different technology right now they are using. Students also participate in the conferences. In-house, we also organize various workshops on the topics which are not normally fully covered in the regular courses. Some of the achievements of the students I would like to highlight here is the one is the URC 2019, which is the undergraduate research competition in which our students have participated in the first prize. Another association which is run here by the students it is under the student chapter of AICHE, American Institute of Chemical Engineers. And they have participated in a competition of Chemica in the Bahrain, and they have won several prizes. Next, please. They also participate in the various cultural activities organized at the institute. For example, an ethnic day celebration. We also take them to the industry for industrial visit. In the beginning, we carry out a precious welcome to make them understand that what do we expect from the students and what they are what they are expecting from us. And we also organize farewell functions for the final year students. Next, please. So where do chemical engineers work? So as you imagine that the chemical engineers work in the chemical process industries or in a petroleum or petroleum refined industries, where in mainly in chemical industries, the raw materials are converted into the chemicals which are generally used by other industries as a raw material. And they are finally converted into the consumer products such as other industries, such as the cement industry, ceramic or glass or paper industry or plastic industries, biochemical process industries, food industries or textile industries. Chemical engineers also specializes in, in the waste management. For example, they can also design a wastewater treatment plant or how to handle solid waste. They also work in testing and R&D laboratories. And some of the students who are interested in the teaching field, they will go on and carry out the, go for the higher study in masters and complete their PhD and join a profession like us. Next, please. So the list of opportunities in the industry are in the areas of production and operation. You are managing a production of one particular plant or you are managing a particular project. So in that you are designing a particular process and designing various equipment. Or you are working in an R&D laboratory and in inventing a new technique or new technology. You are also maybe working in a technical services, providing services to various companies. And there are other aspects, other opportunities are in quality control as well as in sales and marketing. Next is. So when a graduate engineer comes out from the college. So typically he joins a, as a process of plant engineer. And depending on the policy of the company, he will climb the ladders and reach to the next higher level. Next, please. So where do our alums pursue higher study? So these are the, some of the universities where our students have went for the master's program and even later continued the PhD. So to specialize in the areas of environmental and sustainability, in a food technology, or even in a core process engineering. Some of the universities are like here located in USA, John Hopkins University, UK Imperial College in Canada, for example, University of Waterloo in Australia, and in various universities in Europe. Next please. So where do our alums are recruited? So these are the, some of the list, some of the companies where our chemical engineers are working right now. For example, Rickett Benkaiser RD, you might be knowing by the popular brand name Dettol, which they are manufacturing located in Dubai. And other companies such as Petrofac, TNV, and for example, Mena Water, which are which are specialized in designing the wastewater treatment or an intertech which are specialized in testing various lubricants and oil products. Thank you. Next. Thank you very much. I'll pass on to 
Dr. Tupti for the presentation of the Department of Biotech. Thank you, Dr. Nishan. A very warm uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, and I'll just briefly take you through the Department of Biotechnology. I'm Dr. Trupti Gokhale, and uh, I'm from the Department of Biotechnology. So if we look at biotechnology, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, what is biotechnology? It's basically an integration of biology and technology. So this is an interdisciplinary field which wherein you see a connect between biology and various other fields. So if we take a classic example of a blood glucose sensing device that most of us have at home, uh, wherever there is a diabetic patient, you would have this device at home. So it's a classic example of biotechnology and the innovations that have emerged from biotechnology. So this is an integration of biology. It is an integration of computers in field of uh, bioinformatics. If you look at the biosensor device, it's an integration with the electronics as well. So when we talk about biotechnology, it basically opens fields in various uh, ways. There is a plethora of uh, different fields that biotechnology can open by integrating with different core areas. Okay, So uh, we will look into some of these a little later. So let's go to the next slide, uh, please. If you look at the programs that we offer in biotechnology over here, we have uh, two programs. One is the B biotechnology, and then we have the PhD biotechnology. For the bachelors uh, of engineering in biotechnology, the eligibility criteria is uh, at grade 12. You should have physics, chemistry, and mathematics. However, since it's a field in bio related to biology, we do accept students uh, who have completed their physics, chemistry, and biology as well at grade 12. Okay, so that's mainly because it's an integrated field and um, there are many students who have taken biology, are interested in biology, and would like to pursue with biotechnology, right? So for such students, uh, we do accept uh, those who have taken PCB as well as the students who have have done maths. The ones who have done mathematics and not done biology, you don't have to worry about because we have a foundation course which is general biology, which is common to all the disciplines in the first year. So there you would be taken and brought at par with the students who have completed biology in their grade 12. And the students who uh, come with a physics, chemistry, and a biology background and have dropped mathematics in their grade 12, uh, we recommend that they would take a remedial mathematics course so that they are at par again with the students who have taken mathematics. So being an engineering field, uh, being an engineering program, it is extremely important that you're good at your mathematics as well. We do have another program that we offer, which is PhD in biotechnology, and the eligibility of that is master's in biotechnology. Next slide, please. If you look at the curriculum overview of biotechnology, since uh, it's a vast field, it has integration with various other uh, core fields. In the curriculum, we try to offer a flavor of various fields of biotechnology. So here we start with basics like microbiology, environmental biotechnology, and we take the students further to teach them uh, genetic engineering. We teach them recombinant DNA technology. Uh, we give them a flavor of immunology, which is again a completely different field. We teach them cell biology. We take them through the industrial processes uh, in biotechnology by uh, teaching them industrial microbiology and downstream processing. So if you look at the curriculum, it's basically a blend of different flavors that the students will be taken through so that when they graduate, they would have got a good experience of these different areas of biotechnology and they can decide upon their careers. Uh, if you look at the core courses that we offer, there are a good number of labs that are associated with these courses and these labs would give the students hands-on experience in the research field. Now, this is a very core or very important aspect of uh, biotechnology to get hands-on experience. That's mainly because most of the areas are research-oriented 
areas. So we have five core laboratories that wherein we give hands-on experience to the students. And if you look at these laboratories, these are microbiology, industrial microbiology. There's a lab called as uh, instrumental methods of analysis, wherein we teach the students all the analytical instruments and they can use these instruments on their own. It's a complete hands-on with trained faculty and lab instructors. Uh, in case uh, the students uh, want some more additional flavors to these different courses, we have a wide range of electives that they can select from. So if we look at biotechnology, there are openings uh, in the industry, which could be in the food industry. So we give a glimpse of food industry through the course, which is food biotechnology, which talks about the entire food processing industry. If the student is interested in looking at diagnostics and developing diagnostic kits, we have a course which is elective that is immunotechnology. So if we look at the elective courses, these are very different. These will give the students those additional flavors so that they can decide upon their future fields. Next slide, please. Talking about the hands-on experience that we give through the laboratories, it just does not end over here. Uh, we have project type of courses wherein the students can opt for an elective course, which is a project-based course. So these could be laboratory projects, it could be a design project or a study project. So as I mentioned, we are uh, more into a research orientation uh, than uh, the job or uh, looking at the working aspect, it is a field which is more a research-based field. And in this research-based field, it's extremely important that the students have good hands-on. So project courses give them this additional uh, hands-on experience. It gives them an aptitude of working by themselves in the laboratory under the guidance of a, a faculty. So based on the uh, different projects that the students take. There are various specialization areas in which the students can work in the department. And some of these specializations are nanotechnology, wherein the students are working in the field of developing metal nanoparticles. Students are working in the field of biofuels, wherein they are working with different algae and microalgae to work for development of biofuels, which is now another upcoming area because we know about the uh, different sources, the non-renewable energy sources, which are depleting. And now today we are looking at alternative energy sources, right? Genetic engineering is where we give our hands-on agricultural biotechnology, tissue culture. So these are some of the specializations that the students can work and get their hands on. Apart from this, a uh, one semester thesis will give the students an additional benefit, uh, wherein the students, when they graduate, also graduate with a thesis paper. Uh, students have journal publications from these project type of courses and the thesis that they complete on campus. For students who are more keen on joining the industry, we have the practice school program, uh, which uh, Ms. Nahida already spoken about. So from the biotech department, we do have companies uh, with whom we have uh, different tie-ups and the students could be taken for the industry internship program as well. Next slide, please. Shivali, next slide, please. Uh, that's a glimpse into the biotechnology laboratories, uh, some of the high-end equipments that we have. Uh, if you look at the first equipment, that is the inductively coupled plasma, which is a hyphenated technique with the optical emission spectroscopy. This is a metal analyzer. It is like uh, the earlier version what we used to have is AAS. This is a high-end equipment wherein we can analyze any of the metals from the periodic table barring the radioactive metals. So this can work at a level of uh, not PPM but even up to PPB levels. So a very high-end equipment which we teach our students right at the second year level. Yeah? The other ones are chromatographic techniques. We also have equipments like particle size analyzer for the nanotech students. And we also have 
uh, the PCR machines, right? PCR, if you know of, uh, that is what we are using right now for the diagnosis of COVID-19. So COVID-19, the diagnostic technique is by using PCR, wherein we are amplifying the DNA, uh, a specific sequence of the DNA and looking for the positivity. So PCR machine is uh, very important whenever we talk about any molecular biology work or more related to DNA. So any genetic analysis that we want to do, a PCR machine is important. So we give hands-on to students on all these equipments. Next slide, please. So if we look at the future prospects of students who have completed biotechnology, there are a whole range of fields that they can look at, uh, genetic engineering, wherein they can work and uh, uh, develop the different recombinant DNA. An example of genetic engineering would be a BT cotton that we know of, which has made the yields of cotton increase. You know of BT brinjal, these are all come from the genetic engineering techniques. The insulin that the diabetic patients take is also an effort of genetic engineering. Yeah, in tissue engineering, there are options of getting into animal tissue culture or plant tissue culture. You've seen those tiny plants growing in the flasks or in jars, which is an effort of the tissue engineering, which now we are doing for developing the flavor compounds, etc. Forensic sciences uh, is gaining a lot of importance uh, these days uh, because of various reasons. Because today, forensic reports are very important uh, in the court as an evidence. And therefore, that is another field that the students can look at after completing biotechnology. Bioprocess engineering, biorobotics, wine technology, industrial uh, research and development. Now, that could be any industry. It's not a limitation. It could be a food industry it could be a brewery, it could be um, any other industry like the pharmaceutical industry. So there is a wide scope of biotechnologists in these different uh, array of industries. We have the pharmaceutical field wherein it's not only about uh, developing the drug, what a pharmacist do, but today in pharmaceuticals we are looking and moving towards uh, the use of biopharmaceuticals. That is, we are looking at use of biomolecules as pharmacy. So today if we look at COVID-19, we are looking for a solution for COVID-19 and the solution is developing antibodies. So antibodies that are being tried today are biomolecules which can be administered. Yes, uh, anti-venom, that is if a person is being bit by the snake, the anti-venom that has been given is again a biopharmaceutical. Yeah, so these toxoids that are being given or administered are biopharmaceuticals. Similarly, we have vaccine development which also come into biopharmaceuticals. Virology, uh, all, today like viruses are all over and that's why uh, I don't have to talk much about virology, a field that deals with viruses, the emerging diseases and so on, molecular biology. So it's a range of uh, different fields that will open up after studying biotechnology. Yeah, and this information or this study of biotechnology is always application oriented, which will help us in solving societal problems like what we are doing today, all of us fighting against COVID-19. Yeah, so the antibodies that are being developed, the plasma therapy that is being developed is all because of biotechnology. So alternative uh, drug therapy is where instead of drugs we are looking at antibodies and proteins and alternative gene therapy that is correcting the defects in the gene clean technology to have a better environment having pollution control are all the examples or applications of biotechnology next slide please our students have uh, been a, a research, mostly a research uh, inclined field, I'll say. Our students move uh, for higher education and most many of our students have joined the Ivy League in uh, universities like Harvard. They have joined uh, Yale University, just uh, the student who's still pursuing her uh, fourth year right now. She will be graduating in another few uh, months, has got an offer letter from Yale University. Apart from that, our students have joined Cambridge, MIT, Stanford, uh, National University of Singapore. So you see the big names over here and the students uh, were 
uh, granted admission in these uh, universities only because they had a good research background and plus they had publications by the time they graduated from the department. Next slide, please. The students who are interested in taking up job would join the industry and we have an array of industries over here in by as well as in India where our students have been absorbed. Uh, these are some of the industries like uh, we have the food industry, we have the pharma industry, cosmetic industry, we have the diagnostic industry uh, wherein the students have gone in. Like Epigen Labs is a industry which works with development of enzymes. Eastern Biotech is a diagnostic company. Uh, if we look at the food industry, we have Alrawabi, Lacnor, uh, Americana. We have Himalaya, which is into cosmetic as well as the drug industry. So there's a whole range of industries that we have. Uh, Thermo Fisher, uh, Scientific, uh, Sigma, Aldrich are some of the some of the industries wherein we have the students gone into the analytical instruments as well. So they've gone into development as well as sales of analytical equipments. So uh, that's mainly where most of our alumni are and you can see the various positions and designations in which they are settled. So that's all I have from the biotechnology department and I would like to hand over to Ms. Nahid now to take you through the admission details. Thank you. Hi students, I hope you had a complete overview of all the departments. I thank my colleagues for giving the program profiles to all the students and I hope this will go a long way uh, in deciding your uh, future path now. Let me quickly run through the admission details now so that this would help you in the admission process. This is the eligibility criteria for Bits Pilani Dubai campus. Our admissions are completely based on the merit of the students in the grade 12 examinations. Okay, and BITSAT or any other admission test is not mandatory for admissions at Bits Pilani Dubai. As you all know, BITSAT is compulsory for admissions in our Indian campuses, that is Pilani, Goa, and Hyderabad. Registrations are still open. And I think they are extended till May 11th. So you can go ahead and register if you have not done it. If you're also looking at the possibility of getting admitted into any of our Indian campuses. However, for Dubai campus, BITSAT is not compulsory. You can apply directly based on your grade 12 marks. So we accept all the school boards. We mostly have the CBSE students followed by the IEC, we have these various state boards of India, just uh, such as the uh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana Intermediate, we have Tamil Nadu State Board, we have Maharashtra State Board, we have several state boards uh, which take admission here. And uh, we also accept the international boards such as the IB, International Baccalaureate, as well as the A-levels from the UK boards. The subject requirements are as follows for all our engineering programs, physics, chemistry and mathematics is an absolute must. You must study these courses and pass these courses in your grade 12 examination. For biotechnology, there's an exemption. In case you have not studied mathematics and taken biology instead, then we would accept you for the biotechnology program. The minimum requirement in terms of marks is an overall aggregate of 60% to apply. This is the mark requirement to apply. Minimum overall aggregate of 60%. We are also looking for a minimum aggregate of 60% in your physics, chemistry and math subjects. And you must have a minimum of 50% marks in each of these physics, chemistry and math subjects also. So this is the basic requirement for you to apply. And based on the cutoff, you will be allotted an admission. Coming to the important dates, the last date for receipt of application is 18 June this year. So whether or not you receive your results by then, please go ahead and apply. Our applications are currently open. We have received hundreds of applications till date. Just, you just have to leave the marks column blank and submit your application form. It is not, not a mandatory field right now, so you can just leave the marks column blank, fill all the other details and submit your application. It's a simple application, just two sides and very, very student friendly. Uh, the announcement of admission list will be done by us from 27th May 2020 onwards. Just in case your results have not come in by then, we're also looking at the possibility of announcing provisional admissions.
the last date for receipt of admission offer uh for acceptance of your admission offer will be 10 days from the date of issue of admission offer letter uh, this year our classes are scheduled to start from the 26th august with orientation and registration scheduled for the 25th august 2020 hopefully we will stick to these dates but we will be keep updating you as and when uh, you get your results coming to the fee structure it's all available on our website but i would like to quickly run through it whatever you are seeing in red color marked red color application fee admission fee activity and the deposits all these are just one time fees which you pay at the time of admission the balance is a recurring expenditure if you can see tuition fee per semester works out to 22500 dirhams all this fees is indicated in dirhams so one dirham uh, is equivalent to approximately about 20 rupees currently hostel fee is about 15000 per semester and then we have the visa fee which is 2900 every year and medical insurance fee is 1800 but i would like to tell you about the visa unlike us and uk visas you don't have to worry about your uae visa we take the onus on us so we facilitate visas for all our students all you need to do is just submit your passport copy and a photograph along with the visa form we send you a visa form which you just have to sign and send it back to us and we apply for your visa and send your visa copy to you so you don't have to do anything from your side so it's nil effort from your side the visa is provided by us to you it's an annual visa which is renewed every year i've just uh, given this in a better way semester wise the way so that it's easy for you to understand if you can see here the So year is divided into two semesters the first semester is from august to december and the second semester is from january to may and the 45000 annual fee 22500 per semester is what i told you so for per year it works out to around 45000 dirhams the tuition fee which is approximately inr 9 lakhs and hostel fee works out to 15000 per semester and it works out to around 30000 per year which is approximately 6 lakhs per year as hostel fee students who have logged in from uae for you the expenditure only will be in terms of tuition fee but students who are living outside uae with their parents hostel is compulsory for you all and you have to avail hostel which is on the campus it is single room uh, accommodation fully air conditioned and on the campus and you have to avail this compulsorily but then we have a very attractive scholarship for hostel wherein about 80% you can avail a flat 25% on the hostel fee so your it will not be 6 lakhs per year it will be just 4 and 1/2 lakhs per year and this will include all facilities in terms of gymnasium sports facilities and the food is provided on the campus to you so this 4 and 1/2 lakh indian rupees per year includes three times food as well so it is all inclusive package and it is compulsory for students who are living outside uae but students who live within uae you don't have to take up the hostel but students from other emirates such as ras al khaima abu dhabi and other emirates it would be good for you to take up this hostel facility as i mentioned we have attractive scholarships and concessions and based on merit in your grade 12 examination you will be offered several scholarships on your first year tuition fee uh, any aggregate of about 95 equal to or about 95% can fetch you a scholarship of 40% 90 to 94.9 can fetch you 25% and an overall aggregate of 80 to 89.9 can fetch you a scholarship of 15% on the first year tuition fee and concession on hostel fee i already mentioned to you you get 25% across all all the four years you get 25% on the hostel fee if you secure anything above 80% whereas tuition fee what we have indicated here is only for the first year and second year onwards you do get a scholarship of 20% provided you maintain a cgpa of 9 on a scale of 10 besides this we also have other scholarships we have scholarships based on bixac you can see the slabs there a score of 200 to 249 can get you a 25% on the tuition fee first year tuition fee 250 to 299 can fetch you a 50% and greater than 300 can fetch you a 75% and merit in pbisc is also available so if you are a rank holder of pbisc you are eligible for the following scholarships based on your rank 1 to 100 can fetch you 75% 101 to 500 rank can fetch you 50% and 501 to 1000 can fetch you 25% 
Here I would like to add that you can combine two scholarships here, your 12th grade as well as BITSAT, provided your scholarship for a semester does not exceed 50%. Okay, only then you can combine two scholarships. And hostel fee concession is only one, that's on 25% on the hostel fee, so you can avail just one of these. All right, with this we come to the end of our presentation and we are open for your questions now. Uh, so there's a small request from my side. Those of you who have questions specific to a department or to a program, I request you to kindly write the department name and then ask your question. For example, if your question is for the biotechnology department, I request you to write biotechnology and then put your question across so that the concerned faculty can take it up immediately. All right, so let's start with the questions very, very quickly. All the generic questions will be answered by me and specific branch questions will be answered by the respective faculty who have handled your uh, presentation. She's asking about the fee structure and scholarship. I think I've already covered the fee structure and scholarship currently. Your question is answered. Sure. This we have covered already, so we we'll move further. Can I have this laptop? I can do it quickly. All right. So there's a question on the minimum requirement for eligibility. Uh, this is coming from uh, Yukta Kulkarni. Uh, Yukta, you're right by saying that you got a letter saying 70%. Actually, I think you would have applied for computer science. And uh, based on the last year's cutoff, I don't see that you may get an admission into computer science at Bitspilani Dubai campus if you score anything below, below 70%. Though the minimum requirement for application is 60% always. So you have a right to apply if you get 60% in grade 12 examination. But you have to mark a minimum of two or three preferences uh, when you apply. Because if you do not get computer science, then you may end up getting your second or third preference. But computer science, we expect even this year, nobody below 70 may end up getting this discipline. Siddhan Kodar wants to know about working on campus. Siddhan, yes, there's plenty of opportunity to earn while you learn. Uh, we do this very actively. We have been uh, engaging our students for lab work and different uh, departments such as the admissions. I engage a lot of students with professional assistance for handling the admission work. We have the library, which takes in a lot of students through the library work. So we have been engaging the students on campus and we do pay you uh, during this period. There is a minimum um, payment which is given to the students and also a certificate. Okay, there's a question from um, Aditya Vyas. Is Dr. Sujala in? I'm looking to pursue PhD right after my bachelor's from India. I have a good experience with uh, machine learning and AI. Can I get into PhD directly? Okay, I think um, I can answer this question. Aditya, it all depends upon the experience you have. You can go ahead and apply, but most probably we accept for PhD, we accept only a master's degree, unless you have over 20 years of experience in this field. It is uh, very much doubtful that we will be accepting you for PhD at this stage. Varad, hello ma'am, I'm Varad. As you know, A-level exams are cancelled in UK. Yes, Varad, I think I'm already in touch with you. And uh, we are looking at uh, our requirements have not changed. For A-levels, you must have physics, chemistry and maths at A-levels with a minimum grade of C to be eligible to get admission. Can you get admission based on SAT if you are an Indian citizen? Please don't uh, scroll it, please. please. See, our admissions are based on the grade 12 marks, Nandini. Uh, so SAT is not required for admission to Dubai campus. It is required for our Indian campus if you're going under international admissions. But for Dubai, it's only your grade 12 marks. Do not bother about SATs or BITSAT or any other admission test. Uh, there's a question from Vanshika. Uh, is the first year common for all? Can we change the courses of the first year? I opted for chemical engineering. Vanshika, uh, the first year is common for all the disciplines. So whichever discipline you have chosen, you will be doing the same courses. However, from second year onwards, you go into your discipline core courses. And at the end of first year, we do give an option for students to either opt for transfer or if they would like to take a dual degree. Dual degree means you study for one extra year 
and you take two degrees at the same time. So both these options are given to you, but please remember uh, transfer is highly competitive. So you need to have a very good GPA to be accepted for a transfer, plus the availability of seats in which you're seeking a transfer, which discipline you're seeking a transfer. So it is highly competitive. Arnab Gupta, what is the expected cutoff for biotechnology? Uh, Arnab, uh, as I told you, cutoffs are not predetermined. It just happens depending upon the number of applications and the number of seats. We have here around 40 seats for biotechnology this year, and hopefully everybody who meets the criteria would get it. Uh, Akshit Parmar, we should extend the dates of provisional admission due to COVID lockdown. Uh, Akshit, if, I think you've already got a provisional admission. Yes, of course, because of the lockdown situation, we will be extending by a week more. Uh, so after the lo lockdown is over, we will be giving you a week extra to make the payments. Uh, Rushab Varude has a question. Uh, request you that please update on safety and security at the hostels along with dragging claws. Uh, Rishabh, I would like to state very, very categorically that we have zero tolerance to ragging. So there's absolutely no ragging which happens on WITS planning Dubai campus. And then our safety and security regulations are in place. Everyone is expected to sign an undertaking, uh, whether it's in reference to ragging or any other regulations of the hostel. You have to sign an undertaking before you take admission into the hostel. So our safety is at its best. And we have security personnel deployed on the campus, uh, both for the academic block as well as the hostel block. So we take care of that. And the country itself uh, is a very safe country, Dubai, so you don't have to worry at all. Uh, we do not allow even drinking and smoking on the campus for your information. And Adhirat Saxena, again, a uh, question related to admissions. Uh, can I get admission into computer science if I've not taken informa informa informatic practices in 12th grade? Adhiraj, our requirement is only physics, chemistry, and math. Uh, you don't have to take up any computer science related course in 12th standard to be eligible to apply for computer science. We will be starting from the basics. Then we have a question from um, Hardik Chaudhary. Uh, I think I would request uh, Dr. Snehanshu to answer this. Is there mechatronics as the major available in which Dubai campus? And also there's another question related to aeronautics. Can we see that question? Aeronautic question, there was something. So first question is about mechatronics. If you have a major available in it, we don't have a major, but Dr. Snehanshu will explain to you. Yes, hi. Um... So uh, this question is from Hardik. Um, so we currently don't have mechatronics as a major, but uh, you certainly can take mechatronics uh, as an elective and mechatronics and robotics as a minor. So that option is available, but along with the minor, the major has to be mechanical engineering. So it is, it is offered under the Department of Mechanical Engineering. All right, let's move on. There's a question here from Arnav Gupta. Uh, as you know, there is a delay in completion of grade 12 exam. In case the exams are not completed, it does not announced by June 18. What would be the criteria for admission? Arnav, we will keep you updated in such a scenario. But right now, you can go ahead and apply with the marks column blank. We may end up giving a provisional admission and keep it pending for confirmation uh, as and when your results are announced. Anjali has a question, is there an option of a double major at Bitspilani? Yes, of course. Uh, as I mentioned to you, we have a dual degree program uh, where you can do two specializations at the same time by studying one year extra. So you get two different degrees of two different majors. Uh, there's a question for Dr. Sujala from Sai Raj. What is the current strength of the computer science department and what is the student teacher ratio? If student strength is more than 60, how do you maintain focus? So, Jal, out to you. Okay. So, uh, currently, the number of students that we have per year is roughly around 150 students. And we try and divide these into three sections. So, most of the time, 
at least in the maybe in your first and second year most of the time we have say around uh, 50 55 students per section so i think that is a good student uh, faculty ratio All right, there's a question from Jayesh that you were late for the webinar. Can you have a recording? Yes, a recording of this would be sent to all, this, all the registrants, so you would get it. There's a question from Chavi here. Any other subjects other than physics, chemistry, and, and maths required as a part of the background requirements? As we mentioned earlier, these are the only three subjects we require as compulsory in your grade 12 examination. Adrishya Bhatia, there's a question regarding accreditation. Which Dubai is approved by KHDA but not MOE. What are the accreditations are there for Dubai campus? Uh, Bits Pilani, uh, Dubai campus is approved by UGC. So if you go on the University Grants Commission website of the Government of India, you will see Bits Pilani Dubai as a fully recognized campus of Bits Pilani. We are accredited by NAC, National Assessment and Accreditation Council, and also approved by Knowledge and Human Development Authority, Government of Dubai. So if you're taking up jobs in any government or private entities in Dubai, it's fully recognized. Plus, our students are working and studying all over the globe. You must have seen that in the various department presentations, which were given to you, Trisha. There's a, also a question from uh, Rishabh's father regarding, again, rules and regulations, health, security, and discipline. I would like to speak to you in person and explain to you about the, the various uh, health regarding health. I would like to add that we have a clinic on the campus. It's open 24 by 7. We have a paramedic available. We have a doctor who visits every day. So there is a clinic on the campus. Everyone has a health insurance. So if anything, if, if we need to take the students to a hospital, we arrange for the transport as well. And uh, please note that Dubai is a very pollution free country and very rarely our students actually go into major any health crisis as such. Sorry. Devansh is asking what is the last year cutoff for civil? Uh, for civil Devansh, I think last year everyone about 65% got admission into civil engineering. Parvati Kuroop, you want more insight on dual degree program. Okay, let me explain to it, uh, explain about it once again. At the end of first year, every student will be given an opportunity to for dual degree. So if anybody is interested, suppose you have taken up, say, mechanical engineering, but you would also like to take up electronics along alongside that. So you have an option of applying for electronics and communication or electrical and electronics engineering along with mechanical engineering. It's just an example. It can be any combination. It can be computers with biotechnology. It can be any combination. So you can apply for a dual degree. So if you have a CGPA of about 7, 7.5, you will be considered for a dual degree. And all you have to do is instead of four years, as you know, all programs are only four years duration. But if you're opting for a dual degree, you will have to study one or 1.5 years additional. So you may take five or five and a half years and you will graduate with two different degrees, whichever combination you want. Suppose the first degree of opted for mechanical and the second for electronics, then you would get two degrees, one in mechanical engineering and one in electrical and electronics engineering. All you have to do is pay one extra year's fee and that's it. So you get two specializations at the same time. I hope you've understood that part of it. Uh, Kamal Preet Singh, there's a question. If I get 90% marks in CBSC, can I get admission in the program of choice, computer science? Yes, of course, you can. 90% and above, you're almost certain of getting admission in Bits Pilani, Dubai. Okay, there's a question from uh, Mr. Ramachandran on biotechnology. My daughter scored 69% in 10th standard. I was informed she should have 70% for applying now. She's expecting her 12th NIOS exams. Mr. Ramchandran, I think you're mistaken. The minimum eligibility requirement for applying is only 60%. Please note the minimum requirement for applying to any program is 60% and not 70%. So if you have 60% overall aggregate and 60% in physics, chemistry, and math, you are eligible to apply to the program of your choice. Do you have exchange program for computer science with U.S. universities? And if yes, which ones? Uh, Saigaj Karnik is ans asking this question. So, Jala, would you like to take it? Uh, regarding exchange programs, is it? With U.S. universities. Uh, exchange, we don't really have. But we have an MOU that is signed with multiple universities. 
So this, uh, the de details of the university, you will get it on our university website. So it will be university-wide for all four campuses that we do have MOUs that is signed. Can I get back? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, continue live. There are several students who don't prefer to go for a transfer or exchange during the undergraduate program. Most of them prefer to go for master's degree after completing their four years here. There's a question from Nisha Satish uh, that you're located in Dubai and um, working as a teacher for commerce. Do you have the interdisciplinary PhD program? Uh, well, currently we do not have any, any program to cater to the commerce students. We only cater to science students. Let me go to the next question. Yukta Kulkarni, due to the current global health pandemic, there are options for us to do our first term in any of the BITS India campuses. Yukta, uh, we have not thought about it as well. Uh, we're just hoping that we'll be able to flatten this curve within two months and then get going with our new semester in Dubai itself. Just in case, just in case it's not possible, we still have an online learning in place and I don't think you will have any issues as such. Arnab Gupta, this is a question for Dr. Gokhale, Tripti Gokhale. Does lab work start from year one itself or from later years? Over to you, Tripti. Okay, uh, in the first year, we have all the foundation courses and therefore the labs would be same for all the disciplines. Uh, of the foundation courses, as I mentioned, we have two courses which are offered by biotechnology, that is general biology and bio lab. So there will be a biology lab that the students will be exposed to in the first year. But as I said, it's not only for the biotech students, it would be for all the disciplines. So all the programs uh, students who are enrolled into would be doing these labs. Okay. Am I on? Okay, the next question is from Suhail Khan. Uh, good afternoon, Suhail, and I think you would like to know about MBA. Uh, yes, MBA, we have offer MBA program, but it is exclusively for engineers only. I hope you're an engineer by profession. If you are, you're eligible to apply, and applications are currently open for our MBA program. And the unique feature about our MBA is that it's a full-time program, but we offer the classes at convenient evening times and weekend. So that if you are employed during the daytime, you can continue with your employment. And even if you are unemployed and applying from India, you can come over here and look for a full-time job. Of course, on student visa, you are permitted part-time employment. And in case you would like to take up a full-time job, you just have to change your visa status. With that, you're good to go for a full-time job. Uh, we, we allow our MBA students to, to appear for our placements right from the second semester. So as and when you join us, you have to register with our placement department and you will be allowed to participate in all our placement drives and seek gainful employment. Once the application is submitted, and if you meet our eligibility, eligibility criteria of 60% in your bachelor's degree, you will be shortlisted and will be called for an interview with our faculty. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, there's a question from Runjun Singh. Uh, would we be rejected if we have 49% in a single subject? Uh, Runjan Singh, we have a provision for that. I request you to kindly go through our admission bulletin. If you fall below 50 in any of the subjects, physics, chemistry, or math, we have an option of offering you a remedial, a foundation program. And then once you clear that, pass that, taking you for the degree program. So kindly go through our admission bulletin and under eligibility criteria, you will find this information. Okay, Kamal Preet Singh, you have asked about the package. I think, I think you're talking about placement and the minimum package. So our package ranges, our median package stands at 6,000 dirhams uh, per month. So that's about 1.2 lakh Indian rupees. If you are from India, it comes to about 1.2 lakh Indian rupees uh, per month, plus perks. There's a question from Adhirat Saxena. Are there any courses related to agriculture? I would like Dr. Trupti to answer this because I think there are some courses which have uh, you know, agriculture related biotechnologies applied. Yes, uh, Adhiraj, we do have uh, a few courses in which are related to agriculture. One is uh, a cell and tissue culture uh, in which we take you through the 
plant tissue culture aspect and there is another course which is on plant biotechnology so there is a complete elective course on plant biotechnology as well as cell and tissue culture two courses which are related to agriculture thank you okay there's a question from akshit parmar is scholarship applicable on first semester akshit your scholarship is applicable for the entire first year's tuition fee if you're talking about tuition fee and you're talking about hostel it is applicable for all four years all right there's a question for dr sujala from sudan he would like to know the minors offered for csc for computer science discipline what are the kind of minors which are available over to sujala yeah so siddhant we offer a minor in data science now as of now so when you're talking about a minor you finish in the four years itself but there are certain courses that are prerequisites to pass out with a minor so there is a set of courses which you if you plan from your second year you will comfortably be able to finish by the time you graduate all right uh, there's a question from uh, donald how about the sibling scholarship donald if your elder sibling is studying with us currently then you will be eligible for a 25 percent um, concession on the tuition fee and this will be applicable as long as your elder sibling graduates so we we'll offer this only if two siblings are concurrently studying at the campus there's a question from Drishya. Is Dubai campus recognized by UGC? Yes, Drishya, I've already answered this question. You can go on the UGC website and check. Bixpilani Dubai campus is recognized by the University Grants Commission. There's a question from Anjali Jakasenia, and this is for Dr. Vivek of Civil Engineering. And I think it has already been answered by chat and answered. Ankur Parmana. Over to you, Sujala. There's a question. How is the placement after BTech in computer science? What percentage of students are placed? To yeah. placement, uh, what happens is like I think we would have explained to you, you have this practice school program. So in your final year, one complete semester, you're in the industry. It could either be in your first year or in the second year. So many times we have seen that during this placement itself, it does uh, it does convert to a job offer from the company. However, if that doesn't happen, we still do have a placement cell and we do have lots of companies which come in and uh, depending upon your performance in these interviews that the companies would have, many students are uh, selected and they do get recruited. Okay, nice. As regards, I think you also wanted to know the percentage of students placed. I can get this from the placement de department, the exact percentage. As much as I know, it is around 70%. But if, I, if you want to be, be to be exact, then I'll probably check with them and get back to you on the placement percentage. But as I told you, our computer science students are working in all leading companies, be it Microsoft, Google, Apple, uh, all the leading companies, including IBM in India, every, Dell, all these companies have recruited our computer science students. Now coming to Sanjana Ghosh's question, uh, when, when we are paying for application fee, do we multiply by 20 and pay for Indian students? Sanjana, all you need to do is we have an online payment option. Our application fee is 220 dirhams, which works out to around 4,400 rupees plus. So you just have to uh, put your card number and for you it will be deducted in rupees, but our bank would be, it would be debited in dirhams. So you don't have to worry about the conversion just pay 220 dirhams but for you it will be deducted in indian rupees which will be around 4400 rupees plus loga shri what is minimum score should we get to enter biotech loga if you have 60 percent and above in your grade 12 examination overall as well as in physics chemistry maths or biology you are eligible to apply uh, there's a question from Arna. also does the department help in summer internships with companies in uae and india Arna. Uh, as we mentioned to you, we have a uh, seven and a half months internship uh, within the program duration of four years. So in this, about two months is offered after the second year during the summer holidays. So during the summer holidays, after the second year, you will be actually working in a company and you don't have to worry about which company because Bitspilan in Dubai has a collaboration with nearly 300 plus companies to offer internship to our students both in India as well as UAE. So the summer internship can be done in India as well. We have leading companies which have tied up with us for offering this internship to our students. 
So we will be offering this after second year for two months in the summer holidays. But if you would like to work in your other summer holidays as well, that's after first year, then you could look for some options yourself. Harshit, Mr. Harshit Kamal Chand, there's a question. Is Arabic compulsory for studying in Bitspilani? No, uh, Arabic is not compulsory for admission to Bitspilani. Uh, there's a question from Jaskirat Sudan. The question is, can I do my major in computer science and minor in robotics? Would any of the faculty be interested in answering this? I think Dr. Snehanshu is going for it. Yeah, uh, just kidding. Um, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, there, I don't know the answer to your question for sure. Let me be uh, clear outright. The the problem in such cases is because of your major. So minor in robotics is offered from mechanical engineering, and that might require some core courses to be taken from the mechanical engineering department. For example, maybe kinematics and dynamics of machines, maybe uh, material science or uh, machine design. Some of these, okay. If those core courses are not covered or you have not taken them as an elective uh, then i believe you cannot do that okay but we will we will get back to you uh, with much more clarity and confidence uh, on this i think uh, we are running out of time uh, so whatever remaining questions are in there we will try to send you an email and answer your questions and if you have any further questions, there's an email which is showing on the screen, admission at dubai.bits-pilani.ac.in. So please direct your questions to this email ID and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Uh, plus, all, the, all my colleagues who addressed you today, who presented before you today, their profiles are available on our website. So if you would like to communicate directly with any one of them, their email ID is available on our website. You could just go to their respective department and you will get to know their profiles as well as their contact details. But mostly all admission related email uh, questions, please direct it to admission at dubai.bits-pilani.ac.in. My name is Nahid and I have my colleagues, Ms. Shivali and Mr. Sriraj at the admissions office. And they'll be very happy to support you in completing your application process. Please note once again, I'm seeing the question here, is BITSAT required for admission? No, BITSAT is not required for admission. Our admissions are based only on the grade 12 marks. If the results are delayed this year, you may end up getting a provisional admission and it will be confirmed upon the declaration of your results. I think with this, we will wrap up this webinar today. I'm sorry if we have not answered any of your questions. I can also see some questions related to internships and placements of ECE. So we would be sending you an email with all the details. Due to time constraint, we have to wrap this up. Do we have any more time, Shivali? We can? OK, she says that there is some more time. I'm just going through one or two more questions. Uh, Mr. Donald, I already answered. As I mentioned to you, MBA is available only for engineers. Minors of CSC, I think we've already covered, but this question is coming again. Have we covered it? We have, I think. All right, the remaining questions, I think we will email you if you have any specific questions. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you all. Thank, thank you to all my colleagues also who have participated in this webinar today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.